Hello and welcome to Treasure in Every Verse. I'm your host, author and Bible teacher Kevin Madison. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, friends, we're back and we want to get right back into our study. We were doing the foundations, uh, revelation, purpose, and determine the things that God has done in his reconciliation plan to reveal who he is to all his creation and he purposed it in himself. Now, I want to briefly, before we jump right back into Romans 8, we were sort of in the midst of this. We got sort of in the middle. But I want to show you one thing uh, out of the book of Ephesians. Friends, if there was ever a, a book that sort of went the the whole uh, gamut of, of God's plan and what he did in, in redemption in this reconciliation plan, the book of Ephesians is it. The first three chapters in that book, and in part of chapter four, it's just filled, and I do mean absolutely filled, with God's explanation, not that he has to explain himself to us, but he did. In that book, he tell you the how, the when, and the why of almost everything that he, he's done. It is absolutely astonishing to me when I sit down and study it. It's so good. It's going to sound kind of weird, but I fear reading it. I mean, it, it is not as in scared, but it's just for lack of a better term, like I'm unworthy even to read it. I mean, it is amazing, that book. Anyhow, I want to show you some things in that book. And we're going to come right back to this. <laughs> By the way, you guys hear me say it all the time. This is why it's so hard to get through studies, but I love it, right? We're doing in-depth Bible study. And, and this is really where we need to be. Um, I, I would just warn you, please, please. Stay away from these prosperity people. Stay, stay away from that. That That's garbage, friends. Do you know that the enemy, when he comes, how is he going to deceive people? He's going to deceive them by giving them what they want. He's going to deceive the world, the people of the world, what the Bible calls earth dwellers. He's How is he going to deceive them? He's going to deceive them through fake miracles. He's going to deceive them by giving them so-called peace in this world. Have you not read in Isaiah? But God said three times, three times, there is no peace to the wicked, says my God. Friends, forget it, man. You are not going to get peace in this world. How are you going to get peace in the world when the prince of peace, they hate him. And they love darkness. How are you going to get peace in this world when the one who, who rules this world under the sovereignty of God is a absolute and total, everything about wickedness is him, is defined. I mean, you're not going to get it. So he's going to come and his, his preachers and ministers, they're all going to come to you. What are they going to promise you? What are they going to promise you? They can't promise you heaven. Because that's, he's not going there. What is he going to promise you? All he can promise you is hope in this life. And you just read it. Last time we were here. If all you have is hope in this life, you are above all most miserable. Why? Have you looked in the mirror? 
Have you looked in the mirror? Have you seen yourself at 25 and now at 30, now at 35, now at 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 70, 80, 90, some of you 100? Have you seen yourself? Do you see what's happening to you? Do you see what's happening to everyone else around you? Do you see what happens to the world when the seasons change? Do you? Do you look around and see the decay and chaos of the weather? The chaos in the animal kingdom. the disease and destruction that is all around you. Do you see it? Do you think it's going to get better? Then you're not reading the scriptures because it clearly says that things are going to get worse. Evil men and women and boys and girls are going to wax worse and worse. Friend, did you watch some of, of the opening to the Olympics? The debauchery and wickedness? The absolute flaunting and thumbing the eyes? of the most high God with this transgender homosexuality mess, wickedness on the world stage for all to see, to deceive the little ones. They're after your children. If the devil can get the little ones, and listen, please, according to the book, friend, it's going to happen. But it's up to you and I to teach our children the right way. Please, get away from people. I'm talking about pastors and teachers. These are wolves, folks. Absolute wicked people who would have you focus on nothing else but yourself. Your problems, how to fix your life, have your best life now. Why in the world are you gonna have your best life in all this evil and wickedness? How about going to the world wherein dwells only righteousness? Don't you want to be there? Where when the seasons change, there are no leaves dying on trees. There are no storms. That when you get 100, you look like you were when you were 15. When you reach 1,000, you look like you were. When you're 25, when you get a billion, you look the same. Isn't that hope? Being able to walk into the throne room of the Most High God and say, Father. And have him answer, yes, my child. That's not what you desire. That's not what you hope for. You want God to fix this?
that's perishing every second of every day? Is that what you desire? I pray with all of my heart that God's children are not doing that. I pray for all of you who are, who are not saved because somebody told you that all you had to do was say some little prayer or go get baptized. That is not the new birth. Okay. Now, obviously, this is talking about the day of the law, but as we come and get closer to the day of the law, Watch what happens, okay? Watch what happens. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, now Paul was talking to the church at Thessalonica, and it was a beautiful church. He didn't stay there very long, but his relationship with them was, was glorious, as a matter of fact. In three, either it was three weekends or three days, Paul taught them all about the rapture. He taught them all about the second coming. They knew about the enemy. I mean, he, he, in no short period of time, he taught them all of that. That's what he's talking about. He said, do you not remember when I was still with you, when I told you these things? What things? The things up here concerning the coming of the Lord, you see? And I will gather them together to him. That's the rapture. Coming of the Lord is the second coming. He says, don't be shaken in mind, troubled in spirit, word, letter. Somebody forged Paul's name and some stuff. Let no one deceive you. That day isn't coming until the fallen away comes first. And the son of perdition, who opposes all that is called God, sit in the temple of God as he is God, pretending to be God. Now watch. Do, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know. You know. No guessing, folks. Get all of that mess. You know. Don't you really want to know? Do you really want and need me to tell you about this book? Let me help you. But you should know. You should be studying just like I do. You should not be depending upon me. Don't do it. Please, for your sake, don't do it. You have the same anointing. If you are born again, the Spirit of God lives in you. And if you apply yourself, discipline yourself, and set your face on knowing who God and not getting in this book to fix your finances, not getting in this book to fix your children, fix your marriage, to fix your body. Stop that mess. Get in the book to know your God, to know your Father. What is he like? Do you know? The book tells you. You don't need me to tell you. The book tells you what he's like. So, once you get to know him, then you know and understand that evil and wickedness 
and the Antichrist in all the things that's happening in this world is being restrained. You and I are not as wicked as we can be. Why? Because we're being restrained. Devil is not as wicked as he can be. Why not? Because he's been restrained. One day, in the book of Revelation, God says, I am going to remove the restraint. What does that look like? That looks like in a period of seven years, God says, if I don't come back and put a stop to it, the chaos and the wickedness that everyone will die. In seven years, the only reason we ain't that going through that right now is because evil is being restrained. God says, I'm going to remove that restraint. I am going to remove my restraining hand, restricting you from being as evil as you can be. And if you think Hitler, Mao, and Stalin and the worst serial killer, and the worst rapist, and the worst whatever was bad. Oh, you should wait to see you. Then God removed the restraint. And you ain't nowhere near as evil as you can be because God is restraining you. Me too. We think we're good. That's the problem. You haven't read the book. All sinners are exactly alike. What's the difference? The difference is some of us yield to the restraint that's on us. What's the restraint? You know that there's a God. And you know you will reap what you sow. That's the first restraint. The second restraint is your conscience. God put the law in you. So that you would know that it's wrong to murder. Some people blow that candle out. Some people blow that candle out when it comes to sex. What do they do? They turn to men, turn to other men. Women turn to other women. People go and mess around with animals. People raping, people pillaging, people messing with little kids. That's what that looks like. The porn industry. When the restraint on sexuality comes out. They fight against marriage. When the restraint comes out on murder, what happens? They kill little babies in the womb. Friend, don't you know they were doing that back in the days when Israel was worshiping idols? Baal and Moloch and all those, they were sacrificing children. What do you think the abortion industry is? It's a sacrifice to the dem uh, demonic spirits. The restraint's taken off. They took it off. But here, God says, I am going to remove it. Big difference, folks. Huge difference. Okay. That he may be revealed in his own time. Satan has always wanted to reveal the Antichrist. God has stopped him. He tried to reveal it with Cain. <laughs> he said, Cain, yes. Yes. 
Cain was a son of the devil. That's what Jude tells. Okay? He thought Abel was the Messiah. Man, why would Cain think that? It wasn't Cain. It was the devil. He don't know Bible prophecy. So what did he do? Kill them. He's a murderer, friend. They've been trying to kill the Lord Jesus since, since Abel. For the mystery, here's another one. Mystery of what? Lawlessness. What law? The law written in the heart. The law written in the heart. God says, all of my laws, every single person, when I remove the restraint, they're going to completely give themselves over to lawlessness. It's already at work. You see, really? Yeah, but it's being restrained. You see it every day. You see it in the lies that you tell. You say, oh, I don't tell lies. Come on, man. Come on. Really? You just told one. Won't you be real? It's okay. Everybody else knows you do it. Why? Because everybody else is doing it. Only he, who's the he? God. Who now restrains. So when is God restraining lawlessness? Now. He's restraining lawlessness now. Why is God restraining lawlessness? Because if he let it loose, you would kill me. And I would kill you. You see how that works? If he let it loose, then this person right here, he would be revealed. He would be here now if God removed the restraint. The Antichrist will pop up on the scene. You see? You see how this works? You didn't need me to explain that to you. All I did was made you slow down and think about what's going on and what God said. I didn't change the context. I didn't move the words around. I didn't twist them. There's no magic to this, friends. What does it take? It takes for you to slow down. Take your time. Read what it says. Cry out to God and say, Father, I want to understand you. I want to know you. Don't ask for anything else. Ask for his knowledge. Ask for his spiritual wisdom. And ask how to apply it in understanding. That's all. Let your daily cry to God be that. And then get into this book. Study it with all your might. God is restraining it now. And he will continue to do so. You see that right there? It's going to be continual until now you see the change. Don't walk over these little words. This here, that one little word has now totally changed where we're going next. Until, until what God? Until he, Who's the he? Friend, this is a reference to the one who's doing the restraining. It's the same he over here. 
Who's restraining the devil? Do you think there are angels restraining the devil? Of course not. He's the most powerful creature God has ever created. Do you think there are some men on this world, in this world, talking about physical men, that, that are restraining the devil? Get out of here, man. Men have nothing in comparison to angels. So who's the he? The one who created it. The he in the world is who? The Holy Spirit. How is God active in the world? He was active through the Holy Spirit before the man, Jesus Christ, showed up. When Jesus Christ showed up, he was active how? In the man, Jesus Christ. When Christ left, what happened? The Holy Spirit took over again. So who's doing the restraining? God. God? Yeah, God, the Holy Spirit. Friend, he's just as much God as Jesus Christ. He's just as much God as the Father. He is a member of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit, friends, is God. It's not some part of God. He's not one third God. That's ridiculous. He is God. What's the Holy Spirit name? Jesus. What's the Father's name? Jesus. How do I know that? Because Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. <laughs> okay. Until the Spirit of God, you mean he's going to be taken out of the world, and you can't take God out of the world? No. He's going to be taken, what? Out of the way. Did it say it out of the world? No, that's not what it says. Read it for what it says. Out of whose way? Come back up here. God is restraining something that he, who's the he? Who's the he? The Antichrist, friend. That he may be revealed in his own time. So who is being restrained? The Antichrist is being restrained. So Whose way is the Holy Spirit blocking? Who's, whose way is he in? He's in the way of the Antichrist being revealed. You see that? Somebody is being restrained from coming right now today. Who's restraining him? The Holy Spirit. But one day, God is going to stop allowing the Holy Spirit or himself from standing in the way of what? Of this man, the Antichrist, showing up on the scene. So is the Holy Spirit going out of the world? Of course not. He can't go out of the world. He's the one that's holding it all together. He has all power. He's the Almighty. So he can't go out of the world. He's omnipresent. Then, and only then, see, here's the change right here. Then, so you got two words, until something has to happen, and after that happened, then, the lawless one. The lawless one. So he's talking about one individual. Who? The Antichrist. Who is he? I have no idea. I don't care. I am not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for the one who's going to return for me. 
Antichrist isn't coming from me, friend. Jesus Christ is coming from me. So, I'm not even looking for the Antichrist. 